case for a task number three, we're just going to spend some time trying to understand a little better as far as the route advertisement characteristic of the route reflector. So first we're going to shut down R4 BGP session to R2, and then we'll see how the routing table change. Okay, so what we're going to do is shut down between a session between R2 and R4 right there. So we're going to take that session down. Okay, so go over to R4. Before we do that, let's do a quick show IP BGP and currently R4 is learning all the routes. Let's get under router BGP 100, specify the neighbor which is R2 and then we can just shut it down. Okay, so going over to R2 and do show IP BGP, you can see that R2 is still learning route to R6 and that is coming from R5. So R2 is still good reaching R6 since there's no routes through that path right there. But for R4, if we do another show IP BGP, you can see that all the routes that R4 has currently is just to R6, which means it can no longer reach R1 or R5. Okay, so coming back to our diagram right here, so obviously R1 and R5 route gets advertised from R2 to R3. Although there's a, ses a BGP session right here between R3 and R4, R3 does not re-advertise that route to R4. Okay, so that's basically rule number three of route reflector, which is routes that a route reflector learns from a non-client will only be advertised to a client and not another non-client. Okay, so in this case, the non-client is R2, where the route is being learned. R3 is only advertised that to its client, which is R6, but it's not actually advertised that to another non-client, which is R4. And that's why all the routes that R4 has is the routes from R6. Okay, and this is the exact reason why right in the middle right here, we require a full mesh IBGP. Okay, because the only way that R4 is going to learn routes from R2, it's going to be a direct connection to R2. Okay, so that just basically demonstrates the rule number three of route reflector. What we're going to do is to continue to shut down R4 session to R6 and see how the routing table change. So now in addition to this session right here that we took down, we're going to go ahead and shut this session down as well. Okay, so that would be on again R4, router BGP 100, 172.16.0.6 this time, shut. Okay, and then do show IP BGP, you can see that now R4 lost all the routes. And just to show you the reason behind why the R4 lost all of the routes, including the routes to R6 that it had earlier, is we're going to do is to enable a debug IP BGP updates on R4 and then we're going to clear BGP session. So one might think that why R4 does not learn any routes from R3 because the rule set if a route reflector learn a route from a client it should advertise that to all of its non-client and other clients. So what it means is what should have happened was R3 learned routes from R6 it should advertise that route to R4 and R2. Okay, so the question is how come R4 did not receive or install the, those routes in its routing table. So let's do a clear IBGP session that's coming from R3. Okay, and we're doing a debug IBGP updates right now. So we can see right away right here, the update is actually coming through from R3 for all of three routes that belongs to R6, but it's actually being denied because of the route it's being identified as coming from the same cluster. Okay, so if you remember the all of these routes were tagged with a cluster list of 346 by the route reflector, which is R3. So as soon as that route come across to R4, it already had been tagged by the cluster and R4 said, I'm also part of that cluster. I would not install those routes in my routing table. Okay, so that's part of the loop prevention. And that's only because R4 is supposed to have the direct IBGP connection to all of the clients. Okay, same thing when these route gets advertised to from R3 to R2, it will be tagged by the cluster list as we saw. And if somehow that route gets advertised back to R4, then R4 knows when to reject those routes. Okay, so that's the whole reason behind having the cluster ID configured on all of the route reflector that's part of that cluster. Okay, I just want to clarify that these session right here that we manually took down in real life, there should be enough redundancy that built in your, to your network because we are peering based uh, from source loopback to the router loopbacks. So even if you lose like a physical link right here, it doesn't mean that the BGP will go down, the traffic just get rerouted through the available path and those BGP link will still be up. So for the most part, 
the only occasion where you lose that BGP session is when the router lose all of its physical link. Okay, so this actually rarely happens when you lose just the BGP session and not the, all of the physical link. Okay, so now the next question that you might have is what is the reason for this link right here that we know if R3 advertised something to R4 is coming from the same cluster will be rejected and any routes is being received from R2 by R3 it would not re be re-advertised to R4. So okay, so what's the purpose of this link? Okay, in case R3 has a eBGP session to another router, for example, right here, and then receives the route that's being advertised this way, then R3 will advertise that route to R4 as well, and that's the reason of this link. And that's because the routes that the R3 will be advertised would not be tagged by the cluster list, just like how we saw the R2 advertising routes to R6 is not tagged by the cluster list, and that's why it will be accepted by R4. And that's also another reason why we require a full mesh between a route reflector, because without that link and R3 advertise the routes, its uh, eBGP routes to R2, R2 would not re-advertise it to R4, and R4 would know nothing about that route that's coming in through eBGP. Okay, another thing that I also want to mention is any route that's being learned by the client, so in this case, all the routes that's being advertised from R3 to R6, R6 would not re-advertise that back to another route reflector. Okay, so that would not happen. So the only time that the client will advertise a route to a route reflector is it's when it advertises with its own routes or it has an eBGP session to another router. And let me just take that out. So it would advertise its own routes as well as the route that's being learned from an eBGP session. So we advertise that to, in this case, both R3 and R4 being a route reflector as well. Okay, so once you master all those rules with the advertisement, you're pretty much halfway there understanding the route reflector. The other half is basically how to come up with this topology right here, which there's only so many ways of doing it. For example, if you only have a single route reflector in the cluster, then obviously the client can only be connected to that particular route reflector as we have here for R1 and R5. But to give the cluster a better redundancy, then you would need a minimum of two route reflectors. And once you have more than a route reflector, you have to make sure that the clients have a direct connection to all of the route reflectors in that cluster. Okay, so that's within the individual cluster. And then in the middle right here, the most basic form of connectivity is full mesh. So if you don't have that many route reflectors that have to be interconnected, then full mesh might work just fine for you. But otherwise, it's a possibility to build another layer of route reflector, which kind of leads us to our next task. Okay, so that's pretty much complete our task number three. Now, our next and final task, task number four with route reflector hierarchy. Now, to avoid a full mesh IBGP between R2, 3, and 4, we're going to configure R2 to be a route reflector of R3 and R4, and then we're going to remove a BGP session between R3 and R4. Okay, so now we're going to make R2, and delete all that, R2 being a route reflector now also for R3 and R4. So from a perspective of R2, R3 and R4 is going to be its client without R3 and R4 knowing it. Okay, and we're going to eliminate this session right here. Okay, now on R2, again, let's do a quick review of what we have for R2 BGP configuration. We know that the route reflector client is part of the peer policy, and we already have a peer policy right here for R3 and R4. So all we have to do is to add one more command under the peer policy for R3 and R4. Okay, now on R3, we're going to have to remove the BGP session to R4. So 100, so I'm just no router. So BGP 100, no neighbor. Just going to remove 0.4. And then on R4, we're going to do no neighbor 0 0.3. Okay, let's go ahead and do a basic show command on R3. Okay, so R3 still have a complete list of routes to R1, 5, 6, and 7. So nothing's really changed there. Let's check R4. Now oh, it looks like we forgot to do a no shut from the previous session, our previous task. So let me do no neighbor shutdown because we took down that link. We're supposed to clean that up, but I guess I forgot to do that. And that's why we currently do not have any PGP session. So I'm going to bring back session to R2 and R6 because we shut those two links right there down earlier. I have to bring those up and do show IP BGP. You can see 
R4 now has regained its full routing table. So R1, R5, R6, and R7. Okay, so now that we have eliminated that link completely, although in this lab, like I mentioned earlier, this particular link is not so uh, too much used to us since we don't have a external BGP peer for R3. So there's nothing really that R3 will need to send to R4. But now that we have eliminated this link, what's going to happen is anything that R3 is advertised to R2 right now, since R2 is treating R3 as a route reflector client, it will re-advertise that routes to all of its client. In this case, it's R4, R1, and R5, as well as the non-client. In this case, it's R7. So just to prove that the routes from R3 is actually reaching or re-advertised to R4 as well, in this case, it's going to be R6 routes. I believe is to have the show debug. What we can do is to do a clear IPBGP session or refresh from R2. To a little bit of time, you can see the first thing that we saw was a deny to R6 loopback routes. And that's kind of proof that the R4 now is learn, also le receiving R6 loopback from R2, just because now that R4 is a R2 route reflector client. Okay, so that's it's the routes coming from R3, it gets re-advertised to R4. And then along with that is the regular routes, which is R5 routes, R1 routes, and R7 routes that the R4 already has. Okay, so that's just to demonstrate that you can easily eliminate a full mesh IBGP by building another layer of route reflector. And that's usually the strategy that you probably want to go with when you deal with a large number of routers in your network. Basically group the routers in, into a individual route reflector cluster and then you build another layer of route reflector by having a route reflector treated as a route reflector client by the upper layer of a route reflector. Okay, and that completes our task number four. So as you can see the building your BGP Network with the route reflector is not difficult at all. The configuration is pretty straightforward as long as you come up with the correct topology for your BGP and make sure also that you understand fully as far as the rule of the route advertisement with the route reflector. Okay, so that wraps up our video on BGP with the route reflector. In the next video, we're going to look at our second options for building scalable BGP, which is using confederation. Okay, you can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.